Two prominent House Democrats are looking for more information about the sports streaming joint venture planned by Disney, Warner Brothers Discovery, and Fox. In a letter to the CEOs of those companies, New York's Jerry Nadler and Texas's Joaquin Castro write, without more complete information about the pricing intent and organization of this new venture, we're concerned that this consolidation will result in higher prices for consumers and less fair licensing terms for upstream sports leagues and downstream video distributors. Representative Castro joins us now. Good morning. So the, the prices that these uh, media companies are needing to pay for the most prominent league rights have gone way up, and you've got technology companies with nearly bottomless pockets trying to jump in here as well. How much is that a factor, you think, in how you are looking at this joint venture and the, the series of questions I'm looking here. You got, you got 19 questions that you want them to answer. Yeah, well, the thing that we're looking at is how this affects consumers, what it's going to do to pricing, uh, and also how it affects competitors and workers in the marketplace. And so you're right, there's a lot of things going on right now in the cable industry, streaming, video, et cetera. And, you know, linear cable is, I wouldn't say it's dying, but it's certainly on the decline. Companies are trying to strengthen their streaming services. And one of the things that we're concerned about is that you've got these big three companies, Disney, Fox, and Warner Brothers Discovery, that when they form this joint venture, will control about up to 80% of the sports media market. And so what does that mean for their competitors? And ultimately, what does it mean for consumers? Are they going to start with a low price and then in two years that price has exploded? Uh, one of the companies, Warner Brothers Discovery, also just had to let go of two of their uh, directors because of antitrust concerns. So there are a lot of big issues here that we've got to discuss. To what degree is the free market going to take care of this, though, when you've got Amazon Prime sort of waiting in the wings, it seems, in many of these cases, at least in the most popular sports, to say, hey, well, we'll take you know, a game a week here or there. We're building our business with it. And by the way, it's going to be relatively affordable, at least in some cases, to consumers. Well, and look, you know, ultimately it, it could. Uh, but what's strange about this transaction so far is that for a while now, they've announced a CEO, but haven't put any details out there on the table about what this arrangement is going to look like. Uh, and you're right, Netflix and Amazon and then the other traditional companies like Paramount and Comcast also bid for uh, to cover these sports events. And so it's one of those things that the marketplace perhaps will sort out. Uh, but, you know, if you look over the years, that hasn't been the case. The prices for everybody, whether it's cable or streaming, have just continued to go up and in some cases go up at a rapid pace. But are they going up because of how much these companies are charging? Or are they going up in some cases because of how much these companies are charged, right? Some of these leagues have a whole lot of pricing power. Uh, we've just been talking about player salaries and, and the deals that they're able to work out. And, you know, so to what degree is it government's role at this stage to police that versus putting the conditions in place where the free market can operate in this new digital environment in a way that's going to end up being uh, the right thing for consumers? Yeah, I mean, look, it's Congress's job to, and ultimately the regulator's job to make sure that American consumers don't get a raw deal here. Uh, and so we're asking the companies to give us details about this joint venture to conduct oversight and make sure that that doesn't happen. But I, I, to John's question, if, if you were looking at this as a marketplace where the prices for sports licensing costs continue to go up and up and up and up and up, and you were trying to actually prevent that from happening, what would you be doing? Would you be saying that you would need more powerful forces to be able to bid for these things? Do you want more people bidding, less people bidding, but uh, less people with, with more resources? How would you think about that? To the uh, extent you're that you're trying right. to yeah. create that market. You, you, I think you guys are right. You would want more people bidding uh, so that the prices that well, I don't know if that's what you're saying. Lower, yeah, but right? I'm not. I'm not sure. More people. No, no. I, I because there's a, there's a question whether all these people can bid at all because they don't have the resources to bid. So the idea that oh, there's just more right. people, yeah, more people with well, less well, here, money. Here you go. So these guys together right? are going to have incredible new leverage coming all right. together.
to essentially isn't that, isn't set that a up good a price, thing? right? I guess that's my well, point. Well, isn't that's, that a... that's what we're going to get into, right? I mean, they haven't released any deals about this. We've got no pricing information on this. Congress doesn't, and the regulators don't. And so that's why we sent the letter, because we need more information. And when we get it, I'd be glad to come back on and talk about it. And I hope that the CEOs of the companies will also come to Congress and come before you all and discuss it.